Alright, this will be the uh, next YouTube video I'm going to do concerning the figure 8. I'm dead tired, I just woke up from a nap. Anyway, I have uh, two pair of Nunchaku here, plus the pair I had yesterday. Uh, one pair, I just repaired these strings. One pair seems to be a little bit longer than the other. I want to show you the differences in strings. And I'm going to explain to you first about the figure 8 and the difference in the strings. The point is, the shorter the string is, the faster your figure eight will take place because there's, you know, less distance to travel in the palm of the hand. The figure eight is done like this, inside, outside. You can, you can go out here if you want, or you can bring it in real small. There's different things about the figure eight that you'll want to know. We'll start with a normal uh, traditionally sold to you pair of nunchaku. These are the broken strings. <laughs> anyway, this is the uh, street pair that I developed. You can see the, the difference in the ropes right there, just so you have an idea. And uh, let's even compare that further, the street pair to the other pair that I didn't put the rope on all the way, the way I wanted. I mean, as short as I wanted. And we'll make that comparison right there. Alright, we'll start with the longer rope just for the heck of it. Alright, you buy this conventional pair of nunchaku in the Kyoto Company or Warrior Outlet or some, you know, some commercial place that sells stuff. Kyoto Company is more traditional. They're down at uh, North Charles Street in Baltimore, Maryland. Kyoto Company Incorporated. I bought martial arts supplies from those guys since I was 15 years old. It's kind of a little store. Quaint. Got a keto school upstairs. Pretty cool. So I take the nunchaku and I hold them up here, right, and I give you an idea of why. You see the ceiling, the nunchaku, when you're practicing in your mom's basement or something when you're 15 years old, you can accidentally scrape the ceiling with a longer pair of nunchaku. This is why um, the future caused me to buy a shorter pair of nunchaku that would avoid that ceiling by about four to six inches when using them. That way, so when I do the, the over-the-head swing, you know, stuff like that up here, I don't hit that ceiling. Well, anyway, and you always go down. That kind of stuff. It's, it's like you're the going down motion. But back to the figure eight. Now, when doing a figure eight with the longer pair, you bring the nunchaku, you have your wrist set, you bring it over like this over to a resting position. Let's say you have the captured position that I showed you yesterday. You bring it around and you just bring it down like this. So you're bringing the nunchaku down. But instead of just the outside rotation and under the arm, in the downward position you rotate it around and then you change your wrist from this to that this to that. That's the rotation of the wrist. The rotation goes from here to here to here to here to here. If you have a longer pair, like I said, with a long string, you might want to go outside your body. All right, these are unconventional techniques, the figure eight. It's good for blocking. You know, it's good for hitting something and switching a position. It's good for hitting something on this side or you know, when you're running through the woods, you got branches, you know, just go try and hit a branch and see what happens. That thing will go boom and bounce right back up. So you have to learn that when you hit with a nunchaku, when you hit with a nunchaku, that it slides off. As the end comes down that's doing the swinging, it has to hit and slide right about here. Not here, not here, here, right there, midway. So when you're sitting here and you're swinging the nunchaku and you're doing figure eights and you smack something, you want to make sure you smack it and it rolls. Smack and roll. Alright, but when you do that, you don't just pull back like that. I do that because I don't want to hurt myself. You snap. You snap it. Boom. Bam. Like that. See that? How the hand goes. So 
So the nunchaku do the same, just like just like the circular movement. Do the same thing. Smaller pair, shorter rope. So you have that. The shorter pair, doing the figure eight, make a smaller circumference on each side. It makes it possible for you to hold it in a mid position almost. It's supposed to be about an inch down when you grab the top of it and you have the thumb wrapped around like this. Use the hand like a crevice. Alright, so when you're doing the figure eight, you want it to be like that. You want to go over and under. See, when you get to this side, you're moving the wrist like this. So you're actually doing an inner circle. Ropes wear out on these things. I had to replace them yesterday. If you do the inner circle and you learn to flex your rip, your wrist, your rip, rip, you learn to flex your wrist, then you do the outer circle and you're flexing your wrist and then you do them together like that, inner, outer, inner, outer, again, inner, outer, inner, outer. The nunchaku can be used up here, you can practice moving up and down. Just to get a, don't hit yourself in the face with these. In fact, I recommend you go get a foam pair. I call them foamies. You can pick those up at any martial arts supply store. Just walk in and say, I'm just learning how to use these and I don't want to whack myself and hurt me. And I need a foam pair. And they'll give you something you can work with. So, no, they'll sell it to you. They're not going to give it to you. I mean, the last time I went to one of them places, they said $9. I went, $9? I could get them for 39 cents back when I was a kid. We had cardboard boxes we wore to school. We didn't have shoes. We worked 13 days a week. <laughs> anyway, they're, they're a little more expensive. They're like 9 to uh, $15. You can get a good pair of octagonal um, nunchaku at 12 inch length for anywhere from 15 to 20 bucks. Decent martial arts supply store is going to sell you the traditional kind, kind of cheap. And they're easy to repair with the rope. Now, the figure eight on the inside is small. You have the small figure eight. And then you have conventional 12 inch pair. And then you got, um, let's see, I did the side to side thing. Outside circle, capture, inside circle, outside circle. So it's inside, outside, inside. Inside, you can feel the difference. Outside, you can see the difference. <clears throat> Longest pair, I dare not use these indoors. They're good for different things, capturing and holding. A rope pair is good for grabbing arms, maybe maybe moving sticks or, you know, grabbing around things, but you're, you're not going to use a conventional rope pair to, like, you know, stop blades or anything like that, unless you're just smacking them. So the figure eight, with a longer pair, for practice use only, will strengthen your wrist. If you pretend that you are moving the nunchaku down, to protect the lower part, and then up to protect the higher part. Again, down, up. Notice how the wrist keeps turning. Just like you're sitting there in a concert and you're a conductor. Just like that. So you do that, you move down, move up. The shorter pair you can get a little more distance with it. Keep your elbows in. Like that. So you have your figure eight on the inside, the outside, and whoops.
capture, back up to the grab position. You have the under the arm, the snap. You have the uh, outward circle under the arm. You have the capture. Again, you have the standing defensive position, small wrist, tricep, well, forearm actually, but it's a, a small wrist moving technique and a forearm moving technique. Now, the reason that we practice the figure eight, which can go outside the body, like this, or inside, or I wish I had two short pair. I got these two long pair. Or you could just swing two of them at the same time, or cross them over, or you could cross them over the other way. But the point is, the whole idea of the figure is to teach the arm to be able to move in different ways. If you learn the figure eight, if you learn to figure eight your nunchaku, you can learn that your figure eight will teach your body to move. Let me do that in the other direction. Let me face this way and do it. Teach your body to move, and then the figure eight comes around, and bam, you're there. So you go from being here to here, or from here to here, depending on how you're bringing your weapon. Your weapon always rides first, eyes before everything. Your eyes turn, you see it, you bring your head slightly, almost as fast as your weapon, and then your weapon's around. So as you see your opponent, you come around with it. Someone like right up here on you, like, like uh, the shelf, like the shelf is Mr. like freaking, hey dude! And like you like, you know, you smack them with that, pull it up, I don't hit nothing. <clears throat> so that's the figure eight. And we'll leave it at that. Defensive position, one. Defensive position, two. Defensive position capture under the arm, three. Outward circle, four. Forward snap, four. Um, outward circle would be outside, outward circle to the figure eight, or the capture to begin the figure eight on the outside, outward circle to the actual figure eight, and then you can also ride your arm, like I get the longest pair, you can ride it all the way down like this, but you gotta go outside the body when you do that, or you're gonna hit something that's gonna hurt, like an elbow or a freaking knee. Don't sit there with your legs closed in a closed position.